We bless your name. What a great and marvelous God you have. And what a great day you've made for us. You made today. Give it to us as a gift to enjoy your goodness. So as we hear your word today, may it impact our lives. May it reorder our lives. And may it set us on the path of glory. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The key to spiritual growth or off, no, not to, off, yeah, off, of spiritual growth. And I'm talking on the key of generosity. What did I call it? I want to be sure you are all awake. Yeah, the key of generosity. And I'm trusting God to be able to show us the connection between generosity and spiritual growth. Amen? The connection between generosity and spiritual growth. First, what is generosity? First, is a quality of uh, being kind and generous. But that is of a person showing a readiness to give more of something, to give more of something. That's generosity. That is strictly necessary or expected. The Bible used another word for that. The Bible calls it liberality. What did I call it? What did I say? I said, what did I say? That's after the door is closed. Amen? Let's see where they are both used interchangeably. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, that we just read it now, right? We do you to wit the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. How that in great trial of, of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto their liberality. And I like to read it from the New Living Translation, the same place. He said, now listen. That one is with a clearer English. He said, now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles. And they are very poor, but they are also filled with the abundant joy which has overflowed into rich generosity. So you have it as generosity or liberality. That is showing a readiness to give more of something. In their own case, it was money. They had that readiness to always give it. And before I go further, because mostly when people hear that there is a connection between generosity and spiritual growth, they say, what are you talking about? Or if I put it in a clearer language, there is a great connection between your giving life and spiritual growth. That's actually what we're talking about. Because generosity is talking about your giving life. And before, now just relax. Before you query me too much, let me read a few scriptures to start with. Luke 12, verse 34. Luke 12, verse 34. Are we there? Jesus said, For where 
Can somebody finish that for me? Where what? Your treasure. Not his treasure. Your treasure. Where your treasure is, is where your heart is. Did you see that? And it's true. <laughs> where your treasure is, is where your heart is. And you know the heart is the seat of spiritual growth. Luke 12, 21. Because before he got to 34, he says something earlier. He said, Luke 12, 21. He said, so he, is he that lays up what? Can you say it loud? Treasure. So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is now rich towards God. When you are laying up treasure for yourself, you are not rich towards God. That means you are not spiritually matured. Did you see that? That's what it means. You are not spiritually matured. You are not growing in God. The second I would like to read is from where we read this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. Therefore, he says, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in all diligence, in your love to us. See that you abound in this grace also. When I call, please put off the scripture. See that you abide in this grace also. And let them see in it. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. What grace is he talking about? He has shown us from the beginning, that's the grace for generosity. That's the giving grace. That's the grace for liberality. See that you are bound. In, that means, as you claim that your faith is growing. Are you following me? As you claim that your knowledge of God is, is growing. As you claim that you have much utterance. Do you understand me? He says, see to it that this one too keeps going because they go together. Let me read it for us in the New Living Translation. He says, since you excel in so many ways, in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, your love from us, I want you to excel also in the gracious act of giving. He said, I am not commanding you to do this, but I am testing how genuine your love is by comparing it. The game says, to prove the sincerity of your love. And that reminds me what the Bible says in 1 John 3 and verse 18. 1 John 3 and verse 18. He says, love not. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. That means, let not your love just be the I love you, I love you of the mouth. Amen. Let it be backed up by what? Actions. Amen. I said amen. If you read it in the New Living Translation, it said, Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Keep those scriptures in view. As we continue, remember, our focus this morning is showing the connection between generosity, liberality of giving, and spiritual growth. 
I've jumped because I know you know a lot of things already. Not to give God what God deserves. You remember a few weeks ago we said we read give unto Caesar. How many people remember that? Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. Not to give unto God what God deserves is actually to remove your place, yourself from a place of blessing. Because that's the way the kingdom works. And that's why it's important that I show us this. Because your capacity to experience God's grace is also tied to your willingness to honor God. God said, either honor me, I will honor. And we read that very popular scripture from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. How do we honor God? He said, honor the Lord with thy substance. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Proverbs 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. He says, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Honor the Lord with your substance. Another translation says, honor the Lord with your wealth, and with the best part of everything you produce, the best part. As we go spiritually, the things God value becomes higher and higher priorities in our lives. That's how it goes. If the things God values are not becoming your higher priorities, then you are not growing spiritually, no matter how long you have been in church. Amen? I repeat that. If the things God value, values are not becoming your higher priorities, then <laughs> you are not growing in, in spiritually. You may belong in the church, you understand me, but you don't mind the thing in minds. You can tell us you are growing spiritually. It doesn't work that way. That's why I'm teaching today on these values and how for us to let our faith embrace it. Giving is one of the most misunderstood and misappropriated doctrine or virtue or value of our Christian life. That takes me back to what Jesus said. Where your heart is, your treasure will be there. It's as simple as that. If your heart is there, your treasure will follow. If your heart is there, what will follow? So if your heart, if your treasure is not there, it's also an indication that your heart is not there. It's a known fact today that outside of love, the next thing Jesus taught most about is money. And people seem not to hear it during his earthly ministry. Can you imagine when he said, you cannot serve God and mammon? You remember? They put them on the same pedestal. Mammon, mammon is the God that governs money, the influence over money. So you see that you are serving God or money is you are serving money. You see where he places it? That's why how you handle your money is with God is a great connection to your spiritual maturity. You remember a man came to him one time. He said, Master, most what I do to inherit eternal life. He said, don't bother, Bible, don't bother me. Do what the Bible says. You remember? Do the commandments. He said, oh, no problem. I've been doing all that one. He said, okay. But he's been doing all that one. He knows he's not there yet. He said, okay, you lack one more, just one more thing. Release your money. The man said, don't go there. 
<laughs> you remember? The man said, eh, eh, eh. Don't, don't go near that one. That shows you the place it occupies because God too knows. The money you are not ready to release to him is an indication that you are not with him. Some people won't like to hear that, but that's the truth. It's the truth of scripture. Amen? I said amen. Why are you all quiet this morning? Because I'm talking about giving money. They say, Pastor, what brought, what brought you here today to be talking about this for God's sake? Amen? I'm going to show you today, it is related directly to spiritual growth. The biblical understanding of money in general and giving in particular is simply that your spiritual growth, listen to this, always show up in the way you want to money with God. Is the truth. I always tell people very simple analysis. You know, we just read, he said, Your giving actually is to prove that you love him, this how sincere your love is. And everybody knows that because um, when you go back to where you were caught in before you get married, <laughs> perhaps you are a young lady. And you love this guy so much, but your parents come and say, no, you can't marry him. Do you listen? Do you see any girl that listens? No. They don't listen. When they lock the door in the night, she will climb through the window to go see the boy. And if he's the boy, you know what I'm saying? They lock the door, he says, you are wasting your time. He will climb through the roof. You get my point? There is nothing, if you love, that you hold back in buying for or giving to. It's very simple. We know that in life. So how dare you say you love God, but it becomes a pressure, pressure for you to give to him. You don't love him. Do you get my point? Because it's so clear. We, all, we have all gone through it. We are all going through it. It's what we all know. But it's deeper than that. The way you give to God is an indicator of something deeper going on in your life. It's like you are driving your car and then a red light comes on, right? There are red lights it's not a problem. It's just an indicator that something deeper, right, is going on inside. So you park, open the hood, you want to check what is going on. That red light is just an indicator. It's the same with your giving life. It is a great indicator of your spiritual life. You know, it is said in the world today, or in this nation, and you know, they have records that an average Christian gives about 2.5% of his income to the kingdom. When I read that, I said, that's a shame. An average Christian, you know, the, the figures are there because you file all these things. An African Christian gives about 2.5% of his income. Ah, I said, that's, uh, that's a shame. Uh, that's why the church world is as it is, because the love of God is not there. And you too can quickly calculate your own. Don't tell us. Just calculate it inside. <laughs> Like I said in the morning devotion, some of you don't know, we do morning devotion 5 a.m. every day, Monday to Friday online. 
I think about a few weeks ago when I was teaching. And I said, when they start talking about giving and you feel uncomfortable, it shows you where your heart is. You understand me? Red light. <laughs> That's a red light. And it's a lot of believers fall into that category. Why is he talking about this thing again today? They have talked about it enough. But nobody is forcing anybody to give. Do they put gun on somebody and say, say, give now? No. But when they are preaching it and you are not excited to hear it and your heart, you understand me? He's saying, why this one now? It's a red light that you are deep, deep down there in the order of spiritual growth. But how interesting that this same uncomfortability doesn't show up when you are shopping for yourself. Particularly some of you ladies, when you are shopping for dresses and shoes and bracelets, you, you know, can I go on? And, and, and perfume. Eh? It doesn't show. You can go any length. That means you love that one more than you love God. Or the fine things. No, no, no. Don't misunderstand me. God is not against you having the fine things of life. But it's just a matter of priorities. You get my point? At the supermarket, the clothing store, the restaurant you go, you know how to take good care of all that. You don't feel uncomfortable spending for all that. But when your pastor begins to talk about giving, you feel uncomfortable. Why, why that? It's a measure of spiritual growth. It's a red light that the engine is about to knock. <laughs> You see, the Bible is very clear about it, irrespective of how we feel about it. There's no apology to saying what the Bible says. It is always related to your spiritual life. Apostle Paul was writing to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 4, what most of us normally hear is, my gosh, I supply all your needs, but, but that's not where it starts from. That's not where it starts from. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4 from verse 15. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 15. Put it up, please. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. He said, for in Thessalonica, you sent once again, once and again unto my necessity. Now watch. You can read this, but what Paul is saying is, you guys always give to me, to my necessity. You send offering every time. He said, now he now said, <laughs> I am not saying this because I desire a gift, but I desire, go to the next verse, the fruit that may abound to your account. You are giving it to me, right? I'm not saying it because you are giving it to me. I'm saying it because the actual thing that is happening is something is going to abound to your account for doing so. Keep rolling this as I'm saying it. Verse 18. But I am full. I have all and abound. I'm full. I have received of a practitus the things which were sent from you, an order of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable were pleasing to God. Then he now says, but my God shall supply. He says, the reason I'm saying this to you is not just about the money. It's about what it's going to do to you and for you. Not because I desire a gift, 
Somebody say, oh, he's preaching now so that we can give. No, not you will give. That's not, but not because of that, but because of what it will do to you and for you. Because without doing it else anyway, God does not bless. And if you read it very well, when he says, well, after you have given, he said, God is able to make all grace. You see, giving is attached to you receiving all grace. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have enough sufficiency in all things. So your giving is also connected to your growing in grace. Please hear me today. Your capacity to experience God's grace is tied, very integrately tied to your willingness to give, to your generosity. Your capacity to experience God's grace, I repeat it, is integrally tied to your willingness to honor God in giving. And a lot of people are missing out. That's why Christian life has become so dull for them. That's why the, first, uh, the second Corinthians chapter 8 we read, Paul began to show it, the correlation between giving grace and spiritual growth. We read it. He's talking about the church in Macedonia. He said the first thing they did is they gave themselves to the Lord first and to us by the will of God. And that's why they were able to, even in their poverty, willingly give because they have given themselves to the Lord. So when you are not willingly and generously giving, it's an indication that you have not fully given yourself to the Lord. Have you thought of what happened when the church was born? What did they do? The first act, the first act that we recorded, that was recorded about them, they sold their things and brought to the church. If we say some people should do that today, I'm not sure anybody will remain in the church. True or false? That's their first act. To show that they have willingly given themselves over to the Lord. That man that Jesus said, go sell all that you have and give to the poor if you want eternal life. That man said, if that's what it takes to have eternal life, you can keep it. We all read it. So you see that connection every time. How can you say you have given yourself over to him fully? Are you following me? We sing it. We testify of it. But you cannot willingly and generously give to him. It doesn't make sense. They gave themselves to the law. First, because if you don't, you will not be able to give generously. And if you reverse it, if you are not giving generously, it's an indication you have not fully given yourselves. Glory to God. In fact, let me show you another thing they did. Verse 4. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4. I'll read it in the New Living Translation. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing the gift they have. They begged us. In fact, that's why I put it up. 2 Corinthians 8 verse, verse 4. King James says, they entreated us. They praying us with much entreaty. entreaty. What does that mean? Begging us. Please let us give. I like to pastor that kind of church. We need some things in the Bible, but we don't hear. They were begging, please, let us do what? Give it. Paul said, no, look at you. You don't even have anything to eat. They say, it doesn't matter. Let us give what we have first. Begging us with much entreaty, they begged us again and again for that privilege. And you see, giving is a privilege. It's a privilege of the kingdom. Well, last did you beg, Pastor, your preaching is too long. Please, let's give offering. That's why my offering is waiting to be delivered. 
Unlike when we even come to offering times, let's, let's close and go. Glory to God. If you want to know what a man or woman feels about God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself gave us the yardstick. Where is your treasure going? For where your heart is, there your treasure will be. And if you are laying up treasures for yourself and you are not rich towards God, that is abnormal for a child of the kingdom. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Your generosity in the kingdom is a reflection of how spiritually matured and grown you have become. Many struggle with tithe and offering, we treat it the way we want. And we are wondering, where is this manifestation? Well, you have shown us where you are. And God is not going to be committed to you more than that. I'm going to continue with this next Sunday. I'm telling you ahead of time so that in case you don't want to come, because I'm, you know what I'm going to preach, let me tell you very clearly. Amen. I close with this. We all know, we may be city people, but we all know about the principle or the concept of farming, right? We all know about that. It is the same concept or principle. The Bible calls it sowing and reaping. Like Paul said, no one communicated with me concerning sowing and reaping. Every waking morning, see how you use your money to serve God. Then you see the excitement that begins to follow after. Your harvest depends on what you sow. It's as simple as that. There is no farmer who can expect a harvest without sowing seeds. And how much so seeds you sow will determine how much harvest you have. We all know that. And yet we want God to give us more than what we sow for. He can break his word. You can pray a lot, yes. Pass on top of it, yes. Come to church more than everybody, yes. But what a man sows, that shall he reap. I close with this today so that I can continue this week. That is why God always makes sure he provides for you seed and bread. Bread is what you eat. Seed is what you sow. Bread is what? What you eat, seed is what you sow. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Now, he that ministers seed to the sower, but minister bread for your food. Second Corinthians 9, verse 10. He that ministers seed to the sower, but minister bread for your food and multiply your sea sowed. It does not multiply the bread you eat. It's the seed you sow, it multiplies. And multiplies your sea sown. Can you read the last statement there for me? So that I can close. No, read it louder. Okay, somebody has to read it. I think you, 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 you need this. Because the way you are looking at the screen, eh? Oh, you have your own. No wonder. I mean, I saw the way you are. Uh -huh. Read the last statement. And what? You give, but what does he increase? Fruits of your what? Righteousness. You see the connection? Yeah. You see the connection between giving and spiritual growth? 
So, so watch, watch the offerings you are giving from today. Watch how you pay your tithe. Watch how you do your special offerings. Watch how you take care of the poor. Because it goes to increasing what? The fruit of your righteousness. Amen? It goes to increasing the fruits of your righteousness. It goes to increasing the fruits of your righteousness. And he's so, he's so doing in verse 11. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. I will read it in the New Living Translation. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer, then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, we will, they will thank God. Amen. Increase the fruits of your righteousness. Do you want the fruits of righteousness to increase in your life? Then increase your giving. And be excited doing it. Amen. Increase your giving and be what? Excited doing it. When you are not doing it, we already know what is going on on the inside. But today, I see the goodness of God speaking for you. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. It multiplies your seed soul and increases the fruit of your righteousness. I, want to, I need you to pray this morning, Lord, endow me with the giving grace. Just pray that for yourself first. Lord, endow me with the giving grace. Endow me, Lord of heaven, with the giving grace. Endow me with the giving grace. Let my giving life come alive again from today. Let my giving life come alive from today. Father, it is in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you for your word. Your amazing word. Your word that always opens up our understanding. Lord, let the impact of your word today be done upon everyone hearing it. 